And a good evening, Stephen. How you doing? I guess it's an afternoon. It's just getting dark out early these days. Stephen, Stephen Jones with us. Hey, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We got you now. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? Oh, we're doing outstanding, man. It's a football Friday and the Cowboys are winning. I don't think it gets much better than this. How about you? I don't dis I don't disagree. I think it's uh you know, we're our team's really setting up nice here. We had the bye week. We got he- you know, really got some people healthy and making progress and so anyway we're I think in, you know, as good a place as we could hope to be at this time, especially after that first game and you know, as we look forward to Green Bay, uh, we probably got a, a bear in the corner ready to come out of there with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. But it'll be a, you know, it's it's a great place to play football at Lambeau. Uh, what a great history uh, with the game of football. Uh, it'll be just be great going up there. Obviously, Mike's uh, homecoming on his birthday week. So a lot of good things going on. Steven, is there a player like – other than Aaron Rodgers, it's caused your family more heartache? No, I think uh, he'd be right there at the top. I guess maybe Tom Brady. Okay. But uh, the Rodgers games were obviously probably uh, – I don't think we've beaten Brady yet, but uh, the Rodgers games were obviously tough ones because it eliminated us, uh, you know, a couple of them in the playoffs. So, you know, he's just, uh, you know, one of the best to ever play the game and, you know, just a great football player and – uh, certainly, you know, at some point here, they're going to make their run. And, uh, you know, we just got to get in there and, you know, take advantage of uh, having a- an extra week to get people healthy. And we got to play our best football if we're going to go up to Lambeau and get a win. Steven, Jerry and uh, the rest of your players have not been shy in terms of recruiting Odell Beckham Jr. Are you in line with them? What do you think about adding OBJ to your roster? Well, as I've always said, uh, you know, acquisition, player acquisitions, 365 days a year. I think it's rare that you see a talent uh, like OBJ out here this time of year uh, as a free agent. The reason you, you you can't talk openly most of the time is it usually uh, has to do with the trade. And, of course, that's tampering, so you can't openly talk about players. But uh, uh, certainly OBJ is free to do uh, and go where he wants to go. And, uh, you know, we like our football team. We think, uh, you know, hard not to imagine a healthy OBJ, uh, you know, could really help us out. And uh, he did that for the Rams last year. Uh, obviously, if you watch the uh, first quarter and a half of that Super Bowl, uh, OBJ may have been on his way to being the MVP. So, uh, you know, he's a he's certainly a, uh, you know, a top-end football player. Obviously, uh, he's coming off an injury, so that'll be, uh, you know, part of the process. But, uh, you know, we, as everybody said, from Jerry on down, uh, there's certainly interest in that. When's the next uh, a part of the process start? Do you think he's ready to come in and take a physical anytime soon? I think he's working to get there. Um, I, I don't know that he's, you know, it's right right now. But uh, I think in the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, certainly uh, he he may be ready to take a look at it. So with a guy coming off an ACL at 30, he already had an ACL before early in his career. Would this be a prove-it, rent-a-player type of situation, or do you think he's in line for a multi-year deal because of his resume? Yeah, that, that'd be unfair to get into his business and, and uh, how that's going to work out. So we'll just uh, have to work through that. Uh, there had, you know, we, I don't think it's proceeded with any team uh, in terms of what the business may look like. Uh, but uh, certainly we'll roll up our sleeves and get in there and see uh, you know, what that's going to be like. Are you and uh, Jerry at each other like it's been told the Dion decision brought you guys nose to nose back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's only been one of those, and that may have been a little miscommunication. So okay. uh, we communicate really well these days, and uh, I think everybody will be uh, on the same page. Do you kind of pinch yourself a little bit, Steven, saying, wow, we're in November, we got a hell of a shot to do something special this year, and there's a talent like that out there and available? Well, I mean, like I said, it's it's rare that uh, you have a total free agent out there uh, this time of year. I mean, usually these, uh, you know, uh, you know, guy with a resume, as you said, like OBJ, uh, you know, it's rare that you see a, a a player like that out there. Now, it's for obvious reasons, which are real, that he's coming off a significant uh, ACL injury. So, you know, those will all be, uh, you know, measured as we uh, move forward and and see how this might work. 
Does this feel similar to, to the Dion move in the 90s that was able to put you back in the Super Bowl and, and get that third out of four years where the NFC is so wide open that this is a move that could maybe put you over the top in the NFC? You know, they're, they're different in the fact that Dion was in the off season. I mean, we were, uh, you know, negotiating the deal with, uh, you know, with him. That was, uh, you know, it was going to be a long-term deal. Uh, you know, he was a, you know, a player, uh, you know, that was in his prime uh, in terms of his age and, and that type of thing, and he was healthy. So, um, you know, that was something that was different in this situation where you got OBJ, who's obviously a, you know, an amazing uh, talent with an amazing resume, but certainly coming off an injury and, you know, not quite ready to go yet. And uh, uh, so they're, they're different, but uh, I can see where, you know, anytime you get to add, add a player with a resume uh, like these type of players, then uh, it's certainly something you got to take a long, hard look at. Steven, we're seeing, you know, reports and pictures of Tyron Smith starting to work his way back and probably a couple of weeks away have there been some discussions about when he becomes available, how you might proceed and, or is it one of those things? It's like you said, we're just going to wait and give it a couple of weeks and then we'll make that decision when we get there. That's it. I mean, I'm sure, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm sure Mike and my offensive staff, you know, have, have gone through that and, uh, you know, are talking about it, but at the same time, you know, our focus right now, a bigger focus is to beat the Packers. Mm. Uh, you know, that's one of the exciting things about this football team is we do have players who are on, you know, injured reserve that can return uh, like a Tyron Smith, uh, you know, that excites you about your your depth and uh, excites you about what a player like a Tyron Smith uh, could bring to the equation. I mean, he's obviously, when he's healthy, one of the best, if not the best, uh, left tackle in the league. So, uh, you know, it does excite you about the future of this football team. Stephen Jones here with you on 105 through the fan. Okay, different topic. H how do you approach this trend here? Teams are running more than they have in 35 years, and they're having more success than in almost any season ever when it comes to yards per attempt. Stephen, how, how much is offensive football changing here, and and when did this start? Well, I think it's a complementary football. Uh, you know, as Mike like as Mike uses the term all the time, and you know, you, you look at some of these teams and they do have the, the better running teams have really strong defenses and are committed to the run. And, uh, you know, the offense and defense complement one another, uh, which is positive. Uh, but the other thing I would say, I think, uh, really, uh, you know, has, if you look at some of the teams that really do it well, they have very athletic quarterbacks. And, uh, uh, you know, when you have to count for all 11, uh, on the field, it makes it a lot more difficult than defense used to be when, you know, pretty much all the quarterbacks in the league were more, you know, pocket passer types and you didn't have to account for them as a runner. Now with, you know, the game evolving, you're seeing these great athletes uh, that can, you know, run the ball, run it well, and uh, do it consistently. Uh, certainly we played against one of those guys, you know, who gave us fits the other day in the bear with the Bears uh, in fields. And, uh, you know, they're one of the top running teams in the league. And, you know, it, it, the reason I think the, the attempts are, I mean, the yards per attempt are up is because you do got to count for, uh, you know, the quarterback as a runner. And that, that's a challenge. Certainly have another challenge this Sunday with a good running team in Green Bay. It was good to see big Jonathan Hankins against the Bears. The trade that you made there should see Damone Clark, the rookie. How confident are you that this run defense will get better the second half of the season? I'm confident. I th you know, I think we got one of the best in the business uh, and Dan Quinn uh, as our coordinator. Uh, he certainly understands, uh, you know, with the pass rush that we have, um, um, you know, I think we're number one in sacks right now uh, that we're going to, you know, to negate that rush, people are going to want to run the football. And uh, uh, we've got to continue to, you know, have our gap integrity to, uh, you know, be disciplined on the defensive side of the ball and not just be thinking about the, getting the pressure and getting the sack, uh, as a lot of our guys, uh, as you see, uh, you know, when the lights come on, these guys are coming. And uh, uh, so some of that will, you know, just be being more disciplined. But uh, I do think Dan will get this done and get it ingrained in him, and I think we'll uh, continue to improve. Uh, how confident are you that Zeke should play? 
you know, I, I think that's a, a to be determined. Uh, certainly, we're working with him this week. He's been out at practice. Uh, you know, at the same time, uh, we've got to, you know, <laughs> we've got to protect Zeke from Zeke. I mean, he's a fierce competitor. He wants to be out there for his team. Uh, but we also, uh, you know, want to do what's in his best interest in terms of, uh, you know, him being able to play, uh, you know, uh, for the full season here and uh, not have a setback. So we'll just measure that. We'll see how he, uh, more than likely be a game time type decision. And uh, we'll see where we go. What do you hear from the league about Micah Parsons being held all the time? Not, I mean, I you know, I think a lot of it, there's so much attention on Micah, not only uh, the opposing team's offense, but our fans. I mean, I catch myself I just wanting to watch Micah uh, on every play. And uh, certainly uh, he's one of those players that causes that kind of attention. And when you focus on one guy, you see uh, – uh, you know, all the ways they're trying to uh, protect their quarterback and, you know, do things to negate uh, his productivity. So, uh, but, you know, in general, uh, you know, I think our officials do a great job. Uh, it's a very difficult job uh, in terms of what they're asked to do. But uh, I think in general, they do it well. And uh, certainly uh, they try to be consistent. So, you know, that that is what it is in terms of, uh, you know, when you got a great player uh, like a Parsons, uh, people are going to focus on it, and you know they're going to see uh, every little detail of what's going on out there. So that that dynamic wasn't the uh, inspiration for Jerry's Halloween costume. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. No, all right. I know Jerry was on the competition committee, and well, I tell you what, when you serve on a committee like that, you understand, and and you have even more respect for our officials and. Uh, you know what their job is and uh, how difficult it is and uh, my hat's off to them I mean in general they do a great job well Stephen like you and, and other Cowboy fans I wake up in a, in a night sweat as well anytime we got to play Aaron Rodgers and the Packers but this rivalry is so nostalgic how unique is it anytime you get to go up to Lambeau and renew this rivalry between the Cowboys and Packers well, I mean, it's just amazing to go up there. I mean, you know, it just exudes uh, what our game's all about. I mean, you go back to the Lombardi days and all the Hall of Fame great players, uh, you know, that played in that era. And then, of course, uh, you know, they've continued, you know, to put out Hall of Fame type players with Favre and Rodgers, uh, Reggie White, all the, you know, all the great players, all the great coaches. Uh, and then, you know, to go to Lambeau Field, uh, you know, you, it doesn't get any better than that. I'm so looking forward to it, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, just feeling uh, what football is all about. But at the same time, as you said, waking up in some night sweats, worrying about what kind of game Aaron Rodgers is going to have. Now, Jerry's talked quite a bit this week about uh, watching a lot of football over the bye week. And I'm curious, how do the Joneses take in a football Sunday without the Cowboys? Are you guys... Are you guys? Is there a bunch of screens going down? Are you old school like Broadus, where you can't watch the red zone? Because I'm hopeful that the Joneses are sitting there with Scott Hansen and and uh, soaking in all the red zone action. Well, we usually I find myself usually picking a game, uh, one that's uh, you know either uh, going to be a team that we're going to be playing <laughs> or that uh, certainly affects uh, you know our season. But uh, I, I really enjoy watching games on Sunday. Uh, certainly, we play in one time frame, and we're always finding ourselves watching, you know, whatever game. You know, if it's an early game, trying to catch those. Uh, you know, if you're at three, or uh, and then catch the night game as well. But it's uh, always interesting to watch those games. But usually, not a multiple screen guy either. I usually, I'm, I may turn the channel back and forth on two games, but uh, uh, don't necessarily go for the the multi screen game. <laughs> <laughs> Final question, just out of curiosity, is is Odell the the only free agent veteran out there that you guys are looking at? Um, you know, we're always you know we're filling practice squad spots. Uh, you know, looking for opportunities there, maybe to get some looks at some players. But you know, in in terms of that caliber of a player being available, he'd be the only one. Got it. Thank you so much. Give him hell up there. We'll be pulling for you. Thanks, guys. Always great to be on with you.